Say hello to the Shark Stratos, Shark's most recent flagship upright as of the recording of this video. As the presumed replacement for the Shark Vertex, this hopes to take care of some of the glaring shortcomings of the first generation power fins. How does it do? We're going to take a look at what comes in the box, stats and numbers, and cleaning capability. Now let's get to the unboxing. Looking at what comes in the box, there's no surprises here. In fact, most of the parts and construction look very similar to machines dating back to the early DuoClean Apex models. Things like the nozzle, handle, hose, and main body look very similar in construction, but have some minor to major aesthetic changes. The tools are also straight off the older models, with only changes in coloration. The nozzle, despite its new aesthetic appearance, seems to be directly lifted from the Vertex. I don't know whether it's poor quality control or worn out tooling, but the finish on the underside of the nozzle looks particularly sloppy along the back side of the microfiber squeegee, showing some sharp flashing. The brushes are still pretty soft, but the power fins appear stiffer than the Vertex, so we'll see if that makes a difference. The body looks familiar, with the largest difference being a larger dustbin, coned pre-filter, and a flat motor filter design instead of the typical circular intake from the past. The mesh pre-filter in the cup is still not removable for cleaning, but I can get my hand into the cup for cleaning easier than on previous models. The pre-filter's new design is larger, perhaps less restrictive, but the plastic chrome housing around it is super thin. I would expect bending and rubbing to wear away the chrome finish fairly quickly. Now let's look at the stats and numbers. The machine runs at 93 decibels from 24 inches away from the machine. This is actually louder than most previous Shark uprights. The brush motor is quieter, but the actual motor seems louder to my ear. It's very strange. Remember, continued exposure to sound at 93 decibels is considered hazardous to your hearing, so I would recommend wearing ear protection. Even just earbuds will help cut down on that noise level. The brush RPM is in line with other sharks. The most consistent reading I got was 2,605 RPM in the highest mode. This is actually a little lower than the Vertex cordless, which came in around 3,000, but RPM is not everything when it comes to agitation, and we'll look at that in just a moment. The Stratos, like the Apex and Vertex, has three quote-unquote power settings switchable from the handle depending on your flooring. This is nothing sophisticated like an electronic rheostat control used by Mila and Sibo, but rather uses a suction bleeder valve to divert air through the handle vents instead of to the floor. This is an inelegant solution, but it works to some extent. On high, it has 76 to 77 inches of working water lift. On medium, it has 48, and on low, it has 21. The 76 to 77 is a respectable number. Sharks are never short on motor power. Really, most modern machines above $300 aren't. In the past, Shark's downfall is the agitation where the motor power goes to work, and we'll see if that's improved shortly. The handle weight is high on this machine, clocking in at three and a quarter pounds. As we've discussed in previous videos, handle weight is one of the most preventable forms of exertion when vacuuming. The heavier the handle is, the harder the machine will be to maneuver and the quicker you will tire. Compared to the Recar R25S, which comes in at 2.6 pounds in a heavier overall machine, the Shark shows that it's continuing with its high center of gravity designs that put more weight of the motor on the user's arm. If you have back, shoulder, neck, or elbow problems, you'll likely want to look elsewhere. Overall, the weight without cords is just 16 pounds, which isn't too bad for a full-size upright, compared to the R25S, which weighs 18 pounds. But as we saw, the handle is lighter on the Recar in actual use, so the Shark will seem heavier and wear you out faster despite not being a machine with an overly heavy dead weight. One last thing to look at is flat profile. As per usual, Shark is significantly taller in profile than the competition. This can be solved by using it in lift-away mode, but if you have a lot of furniture, that gets old really fast. Here you can see it's almost 5 inches taller in profile than the Recar R25S, which is a massive difference and I think one of the Stratus's most significant shortcomings. Now let's check out the cleaning. If you've watched our Shark Apex or Vertex reviews, you know that they sacrifice carpet cleaning ability for the Zero M anti-hair wrap design. 
It was a trade-off that, in my opinion, was not worth it or even necessary. To see if the Stratos is improved, we weighed the empty cup of the Stratos, the empty bag of the Recar Superlight, and 13 grams of pink sand. First, we vacuumed up the sand with the Stratos. Surprisingly, I could feel the agitation more than on the Apex or the Vertex, and it took care of most of the sand on six passes. I meant to do five, but I lost count. Math is hard. We then took the super light to cover the area left by the Stratos. No particular reason to compare these two, but the super light's just a great carpet cleaner. So the full cup of the Stratos weighed 970 grams up from 958 grams empty. That's 12 grams removed out of the 13 laid down. The Ricard's bag was 54 grams full up and 50 grams empty. So it picked up the one gram the Stratus left behind and apparently some other debris that was embedded in the rug. So on the sand test, I would say the Stratos performance is above average. Not as good as the best embedded dirt cleaners, but better than most box door vacuums. Traditionally, the nemesis of sharks has been copious amounts of pet hair. Typically, it will immediately clog the front duo clean roller and the screen intake of the cup. But after vacuuming up some K-Pok to simulate pet hair, there was no hair on the front roller or over the pre-filter. Just to double check, I put down a large amount of K-Pok and tried again with the same results. As you can see, it struggled to get all the hair off the carpet on the first pass, but it didn't bind up in the way previous models have. Does this mean Shark has fixed the pet hair problem? I would say the Duo Clean Roller will still retain hair eventually and create the Duo Clean Eyelash of impacted hair, as I call it, but I don't think it will happen as quickly with this machine. In summary, the Stratus is a massive improvement over previous models, but it's hard to do worse than those. The big upsides for me are more agitation and better handling of fluffy pet hair. So is it a good value? The big issue for me is the price point versus the build quality. This vacuum has probably some of the most questionable plastic that I've found on a flagship Shark. Things like the secondary filter frame to the hood of the nozzle to the HEPA frame. When you're paying $500 retail for a vacuum, you should expect better, even if you can get it for a slightly lower price point with a coupon. This is the highest price point I've seen a Shark Upright enter, and it's a tier of vacuums that they just aren't competitive with. But that's the problem I typically have with Shark. They're charging you for gimmicks like the new built-in air freshener, but seriously overlooking long-term durability. You can get the Recar R25S, which is a much better prospect for the price point. Other options include the Sibo Dart, which is a stone's throw away at $550 and gives you a vacuum made in Germany instead of China with a 10-year warranty on parts and seven years on labor. And there's no parts that are exceptions like on Shark, where the main motor is warrantied for quote unquote seven years of send-in repair, but things like the nozzle assembly are not covered. With the Stratos, Shark wanted to play with the big boys of the vacuum world, but it really is just a slightly improved Vertex. For that reason, I would recommend one of the alternatives I already mentioned. If you really must have a Shark, get one of the cheaper navigators because you are actually getting the same build quality with a few less features for 150 to 200 bucks. Do you agree? Sound off below in the comments. Also look for our Stratus owner's guide coming soon. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.